If you are uh, looking for maybe a short plane ride in France, you're out of luck. If you can get there by train in less than two and a half hours, that's going to be your only option. Short domestic flights will be grounded. The change designed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and is part of the country's fight against climate change. So are trains really a better choice? And what changes can we make in transportation that would really make a difference? Joining us right now, Dr. Rachel Moncrief, Deputy Director of the International Council of Clean Transportation. Dr. Moncrief, thanks for being with us. You know, kind of on paper, it seems like a good idea, but ultimately you have to have alternatives, right? And Europe has a pretty good uh, train system, whereas we don't necessarily have that in the United States. What could we potentially do here in the U.S. that could be maybe the equivalent? Well, let me tell you, in the U.S., um, about 60 percent of the emissions from transportation actually come from cars. So I think the number one thing that we could do in the U.S. would be to transition our fleet from internal combustion engines to electric vehicles powered by renewable energy. So we all have to take some personal responsibility in trying to help this problem, which is huge right now. Um, do we need to look at more what type of transportation that we're taking and what we're doing? And is there a certain distance at some point, for example, where it just makes more sense to fly versus driving? I mean, that's a great question. And personal responsibility is really important, but far outweighing that, honestly, is what governments have to do the best way to decarbonize the transportation sector is for actually for governments to put in place regulations to ensure that all modes of transportation um, emit much less greenhouse gas emissions than they do today. Uh, it seems like there's been a big push. You had mentioned about EVs. It seems like there's a big push from manufacturers, from the government for uh, EVs, right? Uh, but, you, but the other thing that you mentioned was powered by renewable energy, though. So if many of us are charging our cars, but it's a coal-fired power plant or maybe natural gas, um, can we catch up in our infrastructure for energy production to match what the EV trend seems to be doing right now? That's a great question. The power sector has to clean up as well. And we don't have time, given the, the climate crisis, to wait for the power sector to clean up before we start implementing electric vehicles. Those two things have to happen in parallel. And those, the utilities have to be regulated just like the car manufacturers do to both clean up at the same time. All right, very interesting. Lots of work uh, still to be done ahead. Dr. Rachel Moncrief, uh, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Mike? Thank you.